pleased to be asked to introduce this afternoon's session of creative acts and creative ideas. First, I want to acknowledge the initiative of World Learning and SIT Graduate Institute students in organizing this day, as well as Marlboro College's Ariel Brooks, along with participants, graduating senior dancer Cookie Harris, along with Carolyn Drumster, and Nina Kudimoto, who's a Spark Graduate School. Right. Commencement is next Sunday. The Marlboro campus is seething and surging with activity, last dashes to complete papers, senior presentations and performances, and the final dialogue with an outside expert in the student's field of study. Or Mike, how's that? Uh, the final dialogue in the student's field of study, which we call orals. I want to be here with you this afternoon, but I'm going to be running back up the hill for a senior's play and to sit in on an oral examination. Everywhere I looked today on the schedule, I see the interconnections between the creative community of Brattleboro and the creative campuses of Marlboro which, after all, has a large presence and almost 150 students at the graduate school right near here on Vernon Street. <clears throat> my thesis and my very brief remarks today is this. A creative community is a connected community. It takes imaginative acts for us to connect across boundaries that exist even in a small town. It takes singing together and acting together practicing community dialogue. It takes innovation to rebuild our community so that more people, especially young people, can thrive here. We learn much from the floods of Hurricane Irene. We literally built bridges. On the Marlboro College undergraduate campus, all of our new students and our student leaders had just returned from the orientation trips when the storm struck. We were completely isolated for over three days. No power, no food deliveries, no ambulance service, no roads, and for a while, no telephones. Imagine having parents hear on the television or the radio that their child was in one of the most 18 most isolated communities in the United States. But were we really cut off? No. We relied on each other, providing, uh, proving to be resilient and creative. As soon as Ames Hill reopened, students joined volunteer efforts in West Brattleboro. All this year, a class on community design and disaster worked in the town of Wilmington. All over Vermont, we're learning from disaster and applying those lessons in profoundly creative acts recording images and stories of the flood, imagining what our communities can look like after destruction, and thinking about how we could plan for the next disaster. Let's look at creativity itself. In his 1952 book, The Creative Process, poet and professor Brewster Geisland said that what innovators share is a surrender to the widest and freest ranging of the mind. But to complete this process, he reminds us that what is needed is control and direction. Mahai Csikszentmihalyi, who many of you might know is the author of Creativity and many other books, in his study of innovative individuals, described their unquenchable curiosity, <coughs> fierce determination. His subjects made something new by relating previously unrelated elements, a simple definition of creativity. Colleges are important laboratories for the creative process. We offer what is all too rare, employment for artists, scientists, and other innovative thinkers, spaces to develop new work, environments that ideally show students and faculty, allow students and faculty to experiment, to take risks, to learn from their failures. Most colleges are involved with their surrounding communities for a variety of reasons. To be good neighbors, to attract students, 
and employees to lively, livable, and safe places. Lately, we've all been discussing Governor Shumlin's proposal to increase the presence of Community College of Vermont and the Vermont Technical College in Brattleboro. The question I've been asking everywhere in Montpelier and in Brattleboro is this. Can we imagine what would happen if the state colleges, UVM, SIT, Marlboro, Landmark, Union Institute, and others all cooperated in offering and combining their strengths to benefit Brattleboro? Because we know that economic opportunity follows educational opportunity. Are we creative enough to find a vision together more compelling than any we could imagine alone? And just this morning, I learned that the language requiring a public-private partnership to develop an educational model for Brattleboro has passed both the House and the Senate in the Vermont General Assembly. I am convinced that we can answer that question and that our creativity will connect us. Thank you.